ディズニー・ムーラン。ディズニー・ムーラン。Long ago in China, an important day in a girl's life was the day she presented herself to the matchmaker who would arrange her marriage. This was Mulan's big day, the day she was to bring honor to her family, and she had bungled it completely. Mulan led her horse, calm, solemnly home. As he drank from his draught, she studied her reflection in the water. I'll never bring honor to my family, she said. The other girls were quiet and Demure, poised and polite. But me? I spoke without permission, spoiled, spilled the tea. Even the cricket grandmother f a r gave me couldn't bring enough luck. Mulan slumped on the bench beneath the blossoming trees in the garden. From the doorway of the house, her father. Fatsao watched her sadly. What a beautiful blossom we have this year, he said, sitting down beside her. He pointed to a pink and white b u b Look, this one's late, but I'll bet when it blooms, it will be the most beautiful of all. Her father took Mulan's hair comb from her hands and set it lovingly in her hair. Mulan smiled. The sadness disappearing from her eyes. In the distance, they heard the village drama announcing important visitors. Fatsal and Mulan, accompanied by her mother and grandmother, hurried to see what was happening. The emperor's aide, Chifu, cried out Citizens, the Huns have invaded China. One man From every family must serve in the imperial army. Oh no, thought Mulan. Father s is the only man in the Fa family, but his leg is injured. When the Fa name was called, Fa Zhao handed his cane to his wife and proudly took his conscription notice from the emperor's aide. No, p r e a d i t Mulan. Please, sir, my father. Already fought bravely for the emperor. Silence interrupted the chief, angry that a woman had spoken in the presence of a man. Mula, whispered the father, you dishonor me. That evening, Mula watched her father as he went to his armor cabinet. He lifted his sword gracefully, swung it high above his head, and Lunged forward. Arr! he cried. Pain shot through his leg and he crumpled to the floor. Mulan rushed outside to the garden, fighting back her tears. She sat at the base of the great stone dragon. A cold rain pelted the dragon's stony face. I won't just sit by and let father go to his death, she cried. Inside the family temple, Mulan lit a stick of incense and placed it in the little dragon incense burner. Please help me save father's life, she prayed. Mulan crept into the room where her parents were sleeping and set her comb on her father's table in exchange for his conscription notice. Then she took his sword from the cabinet and cut her long black hair. She doomed his armor, mounted the car, and together they thundered out through the gate. Awakening with a start, Grandmother Fa sat bolt upright in bed. Mulan's gone, she cried. Father awoke, bewildered. He noticed the hair comb on his table. He stumbled to his closet. His armor was missing. Mulan, he shouted. As he threw open the front door, go after her, cried Fali. She could be killed. If I reveal her, she will be 
gasp the fat out. Ancestors, hear our prayers. Prayer, whispered the grandmother. Fa, watch over, Mulan. At the grandmother's first words, the spirit of the first ancestor took shape and cried, "Mushu, awaken!" The dragon incense burner's metal body trembled. I live, Mushu thundered. The first ancestor awakened the ancestors. Mushu sighed and glanced his gun. The temple soon filled with the chatter of ances- ancestral spirits. We must send a guardian to bring Mulan back," said one. "Yes," they all agreed. "Send the most powerful of all." "Okay, okay," said Mushu. "I'll go." The ancestors roared with laughter. After all the trouble you caused last time, you'll never be a guardian again. Go awaken the great stone dragon," ordered the first ancestor, and he threw Mushu out the door. "Rocky, wake up!" cried Mushu. He bunged his gun. Nothing. He hit the statue with his gun, and the stone crumbled. "Great stone dragon, have you awakened?" Called the first ancestor, Mushu emerged from the rubble, holding the dragon's head before him. Ah, uh, ah,、uh, yes, I am the great stone dragon. Go," said the first ancestor. "The fate of the far family rests in your claws." "That's just great," said Mushu. "I'm doomed." Grandmother, the first cricket, Cricky, chirped encouragingly. "I've got it," Mushu cried. I'll make Mulan a hero. Then the ancestors will have to give me my job back. He quickly set out after Mulan with Cricky close behind. By early morning, Mulan had reached a hilltop overlooking the Imperial Army camp. I'd better get some practice, she told Khan. She took a manly stance and drew her sword. It snatched on. It. Sca- scabbard and clattered to the ground. It's going to take a miracle to get it, get me into the army," she said. Suddenly, a great, towering shadow was cast up upon the rocky nearby. The rocks nearby. Did I hear someone ask for a miracle? It roared. "Who are you?" gasped the Mula in awe. "Who am I? You are guardian," cried the Monsieur. I have been sent by your ancestors to guide you through your masquerade. Masquerade. He stepped out from behind a rock that had hidden him. My ancestors sent a lizard to help me. She asked. Dragon. Corrected Mushu. He and Cricky hid inside the Mulan's kerchief. Let's get this show on the road. He said. Mulan. Walked awkwardly through the crowded army camp. Try to act like them, coached the Mush. Mulan strode up to a group of three soldiers: Yao, Tianpu, and Ling. Punch him, Mush whispered to Mulan. It's how men say hello. Mulan hit Yao on the shoulder. Goo, roared Yao. You ain't worth my time, chicken boy. Say that to my face, ya limp noodle. Cried the Mushu, from inside Mulan's kerchief. Mulan cringed. Yao turned and swung a punch. Mulan ducked, and Yao's fist landed on Ling's jaw instead. General Li and his son Captain Shang, and the Emperor's aide chief stepped out of the command tent and saw the chaos. When you have trained these recruits, you will join us. Good luck, Captain," said the general. The next morning, Captain Shang began training the new recruits. He shot an arrow into the top of the tall pole. "Yao, retrieve the arrow," he commanded. "But wait, you seem to be missing something." He opened a box, took out the two heavy bronze discs, and tied them to Yao's wrist. "The first one represents discipline," he said. "The second, strength." Yao and the other soldiers tried to reach the arrow and failed. Then Shang put them through maneuver after maneuver. After several days, Mulan's gaze caught the arrow lodged atop the pole. 
and an idea came to her. Instead of allowing the heavy discs to jangle down and hinder her ascent, she would use them to help her. Quickly she tied the discs together and used them to counter her weight as she seemed shine, 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 shining up the pole. Hooray! shouted the soldiers as Mulan held up the arrow in triumph. Still, Chief wasn't impressed. Those boys aren't fit to be soldiers, he said to Shine. When I send your father, the general, my report, your troop, troops will never see battle. Mushu was listening. Oh no, he groaned. How am I, how am I going to make Mulan a hero if she doesn't fight? He snuck inside the chief's tent and made a creaky forge an official letter. Then he patched together a soldier puppet with some leftover armor, set it on a panda, and rolled it up to Chifu. Urgent letter from General Lee, said the puppet. Who are you? asked Chifu suspiciously. We are in a war run, cried the puppet. There is no time for stupid questions. He handed to Chifu the letter. Captain, shouted. Chifu, reading its contents, we are needed at the front. Shang gathered his troops and they trudged up the snowy slopes toward the Than Shao Pass. In the distance, they spied a plum of black smoke. As they approached, they could see a village in ruins. I don't understand, said Shang. My father should have been here. Chief pointed to the valley below. The imperial forces lay defeated all including the general dead. I'm sorry, whispered Mula. Shang rose to his courage. The hands are moving quickly, he said. We'll make better time to the Imperial City if we go through the pass. We are the only hope for the Emperor now. Move out. As the soldiers forged through the pass, an arrow thanked Shang's armor and knocked him off his horse. Suddenly a hail of flaming arrows filled the air. The hands were attacking. Get out of range, shouted Shang. Save the cannons. They retreated behind a line of rocks and began to fire the cannons at the hands. Hee-haw! came the blood curdling cry of the Han leader Shang Yu as he led the charge down the mountainside. Hold the last cannon for Shang Yu cried Shan Yu. Shan, the soldiers drew their swords ready to bow, ready for battle. Mulan studied the mountain crest, reflected in her blade. She grabbed the last cannon and charged toward the hands alone. Come back, cried Shan. Mulan planted the cannon and aimed. She yanked on Mura Mushu's tail. Wushu! A little flame leapt out of his mouth and lighted the fuse. Kaboom! The rocket zoomed well over Shan Yu's head. You missed him, nudged the monsieur. How could you miss him? Wham! The rocket slammed into the mountain top and exploded, sending an avalanche of snow roaring down. Shan Yu lashed his sword at Mura in fury. She jumped away and stumbled through the snow, trying to out outturn. The avalanche. She was losing the race, but so was Shan Yu. Arr! Mulan heard Shan Yu and his hands cry out as the avalanche bullied them. In the nick of time, Khan raced to Mulan's rescue and she vaulted onto his back. Then they spotted Shan, caught in waves of onrushing snow. Mulan lifted him off. He lifted him out of the avalanche's grip, and Khan carried them both to safety. When they had all reached the higher ground, the troops gathered around. Muran and cheered. You are the craziest man I've ever met, said the Shem, and for that I owe you my life. From now on, you have my trust. Ah, groaned Muran. She felt her aching sad. Her hand was covered in blood. He's injured, cried Shen. Get him to the medic's tent. 
after tending Mulan's, Mulan's wound. The medic stepped outside. Mulan's secret was revealed. A woman! Chiricho was a snake! cried the chief. I did it to save my father, she explained to Shen. High treason! cried the chief. Captain, you know what must be done. Shan threw Mulan's sword in the snow before him. A uh, life for a life, he said. My debt is repaid. Then, turning to the troops, he cried, Move out! Tihu sputtered in disbelief. By law, she must be put to death. But Shan had made his decision. He glared at the chief. I said, Move out! As the troops vanished into the snowy pass, Mulan sighed. I should never have left home. Hey, said Monsieur, you did it to save your father's life. Maybe I didn't go for my father, said Mulan. Maybe what I really wanted was to prove I could do things right. The truth is, we are both frauds, said Monsieur. Your ancestors never sent me. You risked your life to help people you love. I risked your life to help myself. Well, let's go home, sighed Mulan. An eerie old hole stopped them in their tracks. They crept to the edge of a cliff and then peered down. Shan Yu had smashed out of his icy grave. Soon his five strongest hands joined him. They are heading for the imperial city, gasped Mulan. I have to do something. Mulan galloped through the city gates, with Mushu and Kriki beside her. The hands are here, she cried. When she had finally caught up with her comrades, why should I believe you? said Shen. He turned away and climbed the great stairs toward the emperor. Mulan watched as the emperor proclaimed victory. Suddenly the hands burst out of a paper dragon, knocked Shen to the ground, and carried the emperor up to the tower. Shen rallied his men and tried to batter down the palace tower. You'll never get in that way, Mulan called. Come with me, Shan stared at her stubbornly. Yao Ling and Chiu Pu took off after Mulan. Mulan led them to a quiet spot, where she disguised them as women. Then, following Mulan's lead, each one removed his sash and wrapped it around one of the palace pillars. Shan saw what they were doing. He took off his cape and joined them as they shine shined up inside. They found the hands guarding a door. Mulan and her girls took the girls by surprise and overpowered them with the girls out cold. Shan burst through the door. He saw Shan Yu's sword poised over the emperor's head. Shan charged toward Shan Yu and fought him off, while Mulan helped Lin, Yao, and Chi Pu Tianpo get the emperor to safety along a zip line of banners. Mulan cut the zip line so Shan Yu could not follow the emperor. No! cried Shan Yu. He turned to Mulan in fury. Mulan grabbed the Mu Shu and fled. What's the plan? asked the monsieur. Mulan pointed to the fireworks, fireworks tower. I'm way ahead of you, Mushu replied. He and Kriki hopped on a kite and flew to the tower. By the time Mushu returned with a rocket strapped to his back, Mulan had led Shan Yu to the roof. The huge hand lunged for her, but she dodged his blow. As he teetered off balance, she kicked his legs out from under him and pinned him to the roof with his own sword. Seeing the opportunity, Mushu lighted a little stick and handed it to Kriki. Light me, light me, he cried, pointing to the fuse. Fushu! Mushu guided the rocket toward Shan Yu. Mulan ducked. Arr! cried Shan Yu as the rocket carried him off to crash into the fireworks tower. Cavour! Propelled by the blast, Mulan fell down the stairs and landed on Shan. Mushu and Kriki crashed landed nearby. Far Mulan! said the emperor, you have saved us all, and for that I honor you, he bowed to her. Everyone began to bow and cheer. The emperor placed his pendant around Mulan's neck. Take this, he said, 
so your family will know what you have done for me. He handed her Shan Yu's sword, and this, so the world will know what you have done for China. Mu Ran returned home. She knelt before her father and presented the emperor the gifts of, of honor. Fa Zhao took them solemnly and set them aside. The greatest gift and honor is having you for a daughter. I have missed you so. I've missed you too, she said. Isn't it wonderful, said the father. Great, said the grandmother father. She brings home a sword, but if you ask me, she should have brought home a ma Excuse me, called Shan, passing through the gate. Does Fa Mulan live here? Oh, Mulan, I have come to um, return your helmet. That is um, your father's helmet, he stammered. Mulan and her father exchanged a smile. Shan, she asked, would you like to stay for dinner? In the temple, the first ancestor leaned out the window, watching. Well, said the Mushu, come on, who did a good job? Who? Oh, all right, muttered the first ancestor. You can be a guardian again. Yeah, cried the Mushu. Guess who's back on pedestal, pedestal, pedestal five? Cricky banged the gun in glee, and the ancestors cheered. Everyone celebrated a happy ending to Mulan and Mushu's adventures.